Today, we're gonna do something really goofy and pointless and amazing. We're gonna make a working keyboard, okay? A working keyboard, are you ready? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create all of these as interaction points. And then we're gonna make it so that way that goes towards a variable set uh, that will update the text up here. So first off, let's make this look a little bit pretty. So we're gonna start by having the keyboard out of view. And then this guy is gonna be faded out. Tap to add your name, okay. So basically tapping anywhere is going to go over here. Okay, but then here's the deal. We're gonna make it so that you can close this, right? So we're gonna make an on drag interaction that also closes it out. So basically tapping, we'll pull this up, dragging this down, we'll close the keyboard, okay? Tapping, tapping, there we go. I'm gonna open this up so that the typography doesn't get messed up. Tap, close, tap, close, perfect, okay. <laughs> cool, so let's dig into it. First off, we need to create a variable. So I'm gonna create a new variable collection. We're gonna call this working keyboard. Let's just call it key for vibes. Create a string variable, and we're gonna call this uh, you know, input, and it's gonna be empty for now, okay? We're gonna assign that variable of input right here. Let's make it a space then, I guess. Actually, no. Yes, yeah, it's a space, okay. All right, so let's see how that works. So we do need to have an indicator that you're typing, right? So how do we do that? Okay, I know how to do that. So I'm gonna auto layout. I'm gonna make this a grid and I'm going to um, put a little rectangle here. Ah, it doesn't work, does it? Well, no, we can make it work, we can make it work. Down, put it to 10, put the indicator here. As long as we make these guys both like that, maybe we make this a max width of 293. Otherwise, it's filled. Yes, okay, we got this, it's moving. All right. Okay, so then we also need to set a uh, Boolean of typing to false, to false, yes. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and add this guy back. We'll assign that variable to input. Okay, and then that's working, right? Yes, okay. Last thing we need to do is right above this, we're gonna collapse this guy. We're gonna press this plus button. And we're gonna set up the variable of typing to true. Okay, move that up. Then we're gonna do the same thing, but the other way over here. So we're gonna press the plus button, set variable of typing to false, move that up, perfect. And then, now that we've got that, we can set the opacity here to typing. So what that, uh, I'm gonna, and really quick, let me just explain how I did that. Instead of pressing this light eyeball right here, right click it and press typing. And then, same thing over here. Right click it and press typing. So let's see. Oh yeah, baby. Cool. So we got it working, kind of. It looks okay, you know. We could probably tighten that up a little bit, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I'm gonna 
actually pull this to the screen so you can see better. Okay, cool. So now we need to make these all work. So <laughs> this is going to be so brutal. <laughs> Let's do it though. Okay. Just in case we break something. Um, yeah, no, never mind. Never mind. Okay. So I'm going to command or control click, press Q. And then we're going to on click set variable of input to input plus Q. Okay, so let's see what happens. Tap in the name. This looks great, yeah, okay. So now we just need to do that with uh, 27 other characters. So let's go do it. The, best, the quickest way to get to it is to press right here. Instead of pressing here, press just to the left of that. Command or control C, command or control V. Instead of Q, it's gonna be v uh w okay gonna paste again instead of q so i'm going to stop talking now and just go input all these and speed this up see you on the other side all right i did it i freaking did it so let's let's dig into this let's see if all this works Type net, QWERTY. Awesome. I think this looks so cool. Ooh, you know what? Shit. There's like this like space right here because I had to set the variable and uh, I had to I had to give it some value. It couldn't be empty, right? Um, otherwise, when you press this, it's gonna kind of get to nothing, right? So what I'm gonna have to do is I had to set a conditional now on every single one of these, which is going to check the conditional if input is equal to space, just blank space don't do it or sorry as long oh yes as if it's that then set a variable of input to equal exact or or sorry set it to where it's just the queue right it just says queue otherwise we're gonna add queue to it right so just let me just walk through that again really quick so we've got a we're pressing Q now, if the input is empty with just this space, we are gonna replace that space with a Q. If it's not empty, if there's already letters in it, then we wanna set it to where it's those same letters plus Q, right? So that should work. That should work. That should work. The real question is like, do I have to go undo, go redo every single thing that I just did? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. So, fuck, that sucks. Yep. Okay, so we've got this perfect. So we tapped it. Now it's gonna replace. So that's perfect. Okay. So next thing we have to do is make the space work. So. I'm gonna press this space bar. We don't need to worry about the conditional anymore. Um, well, actually, no, yeah. If it's if it's a space, just keep it as a space. Otherwise, input is equal to input plus space. Okay, let's see if that works. All right, space, yes, very cool. All right, one last thing that we want to do is duplicate this. When we press the, the go button, my camera ran out of battery, so here we are on my phone filming the rest of this video. Uh, okay, so uh, when you press the go button, it's gonna move to this frame where basically like collapses the keyboard down. Uh, but we also need to, before we move to that frame, we want to set 
the variable? No, we're good actually, right? Oh, no, we need to set is typing. We need to set variable typing. Typing to false. Perfect. You need to make sure that this is above the movement to the other frame or else it's going to bug out or it's not going to actually happen. So here we go. We got that plus that. And then we press the go key and it collapsed the keyboard and the cursor went away. So my name is Ritri Rurti. You know what I mean? Is that your name? That's my name too. Okay, so th there we go. We've got that working. Now the real question is, can we get a uh, a the, the delete button to work? I don't know if we can. Let's see. We've got we've got to set the input to input. You know, minus like with one letter off, one character off. See, the trouble is with these Figma uh, uh, interactions, it doesn't actually have real logic to it, like like JavaScript or anything like that. So we're not actually able to run like code, you know? So the real... I'm trying to think, maybe we could actually set up a second variable that would allow you to kind of like undo, you know what I mean? So we have input and then previous input. And that would allow us to have sort of like a history to it, you know? But that history would need to be one off. No, I don't think that would work either. That wouldn't work either. Done. Yeah, so since there is no JavaScript to this or code to this, you're actually unable to to use a, uh, a delete button. So that's unfortunate. We cannot set a delete button. So my name is Nolan Perkins. Yes, my name is Nolan Perkins, and this is how you make a keyboard. And what's really cool about this, you know, again, this is over-engineered 100%. But let's say that we had a submit button. Let's also say that that submit button would not be activated until you've actually inputted something. So in order to do that, we would need to create a, another Boolean. We would need to say uh, has name, and that's currently false. I'm going to group this frame, and I'm going to duplicate it and turn this one on and off, right? So basically kind of like we'll rename this layer to disabled we'll name this to active buttons so all of the all of the active we're going to right click on that eyeball and we're going to say has name 
So now when it's empty, it has a name. But once we have to go add to all of that logic, once we go move over here, we're going to check on that submit. We're going to say um, add a conditional. And we're going to say as long as input doesn't equal just a space, right? As long as it's not empty, we're going to set the variable of has name to true. We're gonna move that above the navigation in here. Let's see if this works. So we're gonna I'm gonna say my name is Nolan. I'm gonna press go and now submit works. Let's redo that. And if I press go, submit doesn't work. Right? So it's perfect. Nolan. Okay. Now once we press submit, hey name. You see what I'm doing here? I'm gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna press this over. I'm gonna move that to here. Let's size both of these down, just in case it's like a long name, you know. Uh, put this here. I'm gonna fill this, and then I'm gonna set this to a wrapped grid. That way, if this name gets super long, it'll start wrapping. Hey. We're going to assign this to the input. Okay. You're the best for submitting. Heart. We'll slide that in, slide this one out. Okay, so only if we click on the active name, active button, only then will it move to frame four. Okay, we're gonna have it go gentle. We're gonna have that. Um, there you go. Okay, so let's see how this flow works. So tap to add your name. Nolan. Press go. Submit. Hey Nolan, you're the best for submitting. <laughs> let's uh, let's re let's rework that a little bit. Because clearly, uh, your boy was typing bad. Thanks for submitting. Love you. Okay. Yo. Go. Submit. You're the best for submitting. I love you. Hey, yo. You're the best for submitting. Very cool. You see how that goes? So, you know, you can see how this is actually valuable, right? There's, there's some advanced prototyping here. There was some conditionals involved. But more importantly, you're able to actually have some logic that lives beyond just that one input because using variables to have an input field, you can then surface that data up later in the flow to make it feel much more cohesive. So if you're really trying to nail a, a, a layout or a flow and you're trying to get your stakeholder to get buy-in on it, it's definitely worth doing something like this. But uh, again, as you saw, when I added some extra logic to that keys, I had to go paste it on every single one, which really sucked. Again, it's worth it if you've got the time to do it, uh, but only if you have the time to do it, <laughs> which you usually don't. Either way, I hope you got something out of this. I had a lot of fun, and I hope you did too. See you on the next one.